Okay, thank you. And thank uh, Niva Saf and the organized committee for organizing this beautiful uh, workshop. So I'll talk Thank you. I'll talk about bending of whiskers emerging from the motor plant upon touch. This is a joint theoretical, computational, and experimental study. So the theoretical work is done by student in my lab, Karin Decker, and myself. And the experimental work is done by David Kleinfeld, in his postdocs, uh, Rui uh, Lu and uh, Arash Fasehi, and by uh, Dan O'Connor and uh, Kai Severson. So this is the whiskers motosensory motor system of rodents. Uh, this is an uh, active scanning somatosensory system. Uh, rodents have matrices, two matrices of uh, whiskers, one on, from, emerging from each cheek. There are about 30 whiskers or vibrissa on each side. They are organized in five rows, and in each row there are between five to nine uh, vibrissa. Uh, this is a major modality sensory modality for rodents. So uh, they can, for example, carry out object localization tasks just by whiskers. So what you see here is, is a position. This is a position of a putative uh, bar that emerges from below. So there are many, many positions for the, for, uh, for, that a bar can take. And here, this bar, bar emerges from behind, from below, and the whisker bends, the, anim the animal moves the whisker, the whisker bends, and from the moment and forces on the whisker shaft, the animal can estimate the azimuthal and the radial position of the whisker. So the question is how, of the, uh, of the bar, so how can you do it? To know, to, to understand this, we need to look also in the musculature of the whisker. So the whisker are moved mostly by intrinsic, whisk, uh, intrinsic muscles. So if the, these are two Whisker, these are the shaft, this is the follicle, the, the shaft within the follicle, and um, each uh, muscle connects two uh, adjacent whisker, it connects this whisker from the top and this whisker from below. So when this, whisker, this muscle contracts, the uh, shaft rotates and translates, and uh, that's how you get whisking. This is the whisker, the whisker is almost a conical uh, body, a conical beam, and uh, we parameterize the distance along, of, along the whisker by S. S equals zero is the point here when the, where the whisker stems out of the cell, and S equal S obj is the point of contact, and L is the length of the whisker. So this is the result from the corner. This is the bending moment on the whisker, and this is here in black, the fine grade of a trigeminal ganglion, ganglion neuron. This is the primary sensory neuron that translates the mechanics to uh, neuronal signals. And this is an estimation based on the moment in its, its derivative. So uh, the trigeminal ganglion neuron convert the mechanics to uh, neuronal signals. And this conver uh, conversion can, uh, transformation can be estimated uh, very well by the bending moment and its derivative. So this leads us to several questions. First, what are the forces and the moment developed on the whisker shaft, shaft during touch? And the whisker means the whisker when it's embedded in the motor plant. How do these forces and moments depend on the radial and azimuthal position of the object? And how can the animal extract the object position from forces in the follicle? So to answer this, it feels to, to parameterize the position of the object. So one parameter is the radial position, S obj, the point of touch over L, the length of whisker. And the second one is the phase of the initial contact. Phase, phi, initial contact, IC. Phi IC is the phase of initial contact. So this is the angle of the whisking. So this is protraction, this is retraction, this is the phase from zero to two pi. From zero to two pi, this is the protraction phase, protraction is a, a part of the, of the cycle. So this is here, the animal touches the object, the whisker touches the object, object near maximum retraction at the beginning of the protraction time, and here it does it at the end of the protraction time. So briefly, 
something brief about the model. So we model the mystical pad as a set of intrinsic masses, springs and dampers, and the springs and dampers mimic the viscoelastic properties of the tissue. And the vibrissa itself is a model as an elastic beam according to the quasi-static Euler-Bernoulli equation. Some results, okay, so this is a, these are traces, trajectories of uh, the angle be measured from the minimum retraction angle, so this is the angle here, phi, delta, delta theta, the angle, as a function of time for phi IC uh, close to maximum retraction in black, in maroon, and close to maximum protraction in orange. So you can see that if contact occurs at the end of the whisking uh, phase or whisking cycle, uh, the trajectory is not so much affected by the contact, the whisker bends well, and you can see some regime when you see contact here in uh, wide, uh, in this uh, thick line. In contrast, when object, the contact occurs at the beginning, uh, it blocks the whisker from uh, rotating and translating. So as a result, the angle here of whisking is relatively small, but the bending moment here is larger than what you can see here. It's not as large as if the whisker were tightly held by the plant, because the plant also translates, translates and uh, rotates. So more modeling results, you can see here the maximum bending moment. So please pay attention, this is the maximum bending moment. Okay. It's a function of phi IC, the phase of initial contact. Uh, and this I plotted for several values of S obj over L. This uh, proximal object, 0 0.3 here, and this type object, and you can see this shape. Here it increases more or less uh, uh, gradually with uh, phi IC decreasing, decreasing until saturation. And if S obj over A is, lar is uh, sm larger, then the uh, bending moment is smaller. If it's large enough, then for a certain value of phi C below, below this point here, the whisker doesn't, uh, he, doesn't hold to the object, doesn't, um, um, loses contact with the object, and slips off. So this is, what you see, this is what you see here. And this is result of experiment. This is the result of experiment from Dan O'Connor's lab. For one whisker, okay, there are many, and there are about more than 10, and you can see similar results here and here, and the slope in this regime is denoted by this dashed line. So we took all these slopes here for various values of S obj, S obj over L and various phases, and, and various whiskers, sorry, and we computed the slopes, we plot the slope here for various whiskers, and you can see in uh, blue results from the lab of Dan O'Connor and Kai Serveson, and in red from the lab of David Kleinfeld and Rui Lu. And you can see that there, are, there is a lot of variability between whiskers. We can understand, partially understand why. But the model, modeling result is some, somewhere in between. So uh, semi-quantitatively, the model works well and explains uh, the behavior that we can see experimentally. Uh, we co can also co calculate the time during which the whisker maintains contact with the object, of course, if there is no slip off. And it turns out that uh, this value decreases li almost linearly uh, with phi C. We have also some analytical results showing that if uh, the bending whisker, if the uh, movement, bend, uh, movement of the whisker is small and uh, slow, then this is exactly analytical. And we can also plot the peak bending moment as a function of initial contact angle, and this goes more or less linearly with uh, theta IC, with the angle, not to say. So let's go to T cone, to the time of contact. Uh, suppose the animal knows the parameter of its own movement, and it, it's not amplitude, it's not the relationship between phase and theta, with, during which the so it's not what, what occurs in his or her system. And uh, so if it knows uh, the contact time, let's say by the firing rate of some trigeminal ganglion neurons, 
it can estimate phi C, independent of S object. If you know theta cone, it can know phi C. Now, what about N object? Can it know the radial position from N object, for, uh, from N object max? No, because if this is N object, it can occur for a larger, for, more, for smaller S object and smaller theta IC or larger N object. And larger theta, or smaller range object and uh, larger theta IC. But if the animal knows also theta IC, so from theta IC and an object, it can determine also S object over L, it can determine the, no, the radial position from T cone and an object. So, Max, so to conclude, the brista behaves like an elastic beam uh, for this type of object and like a rigid body for proximal object. Contact time t cone depends almost linearly on the initial contact phase phi C. The maximum bend bending moment in object max depends almost linearly on the initial contact angle theta IC, and also in the, this analytical limit, we can also show it uh, mathematically. And this means that the uh, animal can infer the object position from the contact time and for an object max. Thank you. This is open for questions. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. So the, the maximal bending moment, this is encoded in the neurons of the yes. trigeminal? Yes, as I showed in the initial. In the initial uh, the slides, for the initial, the initial uh, slides from the Antonov lab, so if you know the bending moment and its derivative, you can extract the fine rate of trigeminal ganglion neuron, and so you can also do it like that. Yeah. This is very interesting. I know that uh, some, you know, we're doing some work in robotics using whiskers for object localization as well. Um, I was curious, so um, the representation, the neural representation of the position is a polar representation or is, or is a three-dimensional representation? Okay, um, well, uh, if I understand the, the question correctly, this work was done in two, uh, two dimensions. But we can, with one of the extensions, to, to, move to, to move to three dimensions. Of course, it's more, more complicated. Is there a point does the mouse use, for example, the mouse use 3D representation or means that for 2D? Okay, the, 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 depending on the, on the task. Here, when the, when the pole emerges from, behind, from below, it's a 2D problem, so it's easy. Well, thank you very much, David.